Okay, so a lot of you guys know that I write for a magazine. It's called Primitive Archer. It's the latest issue, anyway. Uh, I do a, a flint napping column in the magazine. Okay. That's me right there. <laughs> and uh, I talk about arrowheads, mainly. True arrowheads. Uh, I, have, I use the term arrowheads in general for everything when I post a little... Uh, title for my videos. Sometimes I just say arrowhead, even though I, it's in that lateral dark point or a knife blade. But as far as the magazine articles go, I do true arrowheads or or descriptions of arrowheads that were were put on arrows. Okay. And uh, then I do some other Q and A in there underneath the description of the arrowhead. But I don't get a chance to get into other topics really because there's only one page. I only do a single page article on every issue and uh, there's other other uh, issues that I'm going to get into in these discussion videos uh, one of them is the issue of uh, did ancient man adapt to his environment or did he change his environment to fit his culture or his knowledge and what I mean by that is uh, you can develop a survival strategy that includes burning every year, as an example. So you burn ahead of you before you move into an area so that you have a lot of grazing area because a lot of grass grows up after a burn for a deer and other ruminants, other animals that feed on grasses. And, and plant short plants and stuff. So if you have a culture that is used to burning before you move into an area, you're actually creating your the environment you want to live in. And maybe they'll bring in their own animals or that they'll be following a herd of animals and they'll help the animals in, in, in certain ways to uh, keep them there. Uh, burning is one, but uh, in other ways, you can actually herd animals like uh, caribou and reindeer. You can herd them in certain ways and help them find grazing areas uh, and corral them. And I've seen uh, reindeer farmers, current ones in Siberia. There's documentaries on them. How do they how do they work with them? And they're actually wild animals, and yet they're used to being around humans. And they trust humans, and then they work for humans, and then they provide food. Uh, the, they, they kill every so often a few of them off from their herd to feed themselves. And uh, they'll pull, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of cute to see them pull sleds with their children, and the children ride the reindeer sometimes, and they're that docile. But they're still wild animals. I'm wondering if that kind of attitude and that kind of, uh, relationship with animals came with Native Americans into the New World from Siberia where there's evidence that they came in through the uh, land bridge. I wonder if they had their that same types of relationships with the animals that they were following, the mammoths and the caribou and other herds, the bison. Okay, we always see the bison as strong, wild and resistant animals. But I'm wondering if they had a close relationship with bison the same way that they had a relationship with caribou. Where they could be very close to the bison, follow the herds very closely, and actually interact with the young bison, get them used to humans, and uh, be able to kill off the weak ones or the ones that were they would selectively kill from the herd uh, so as to not disturb them as far as the... Uh, reproductive capabilities and so forth and live alongside wild animals and yet the relationship was not dangerous okay uh, I think that is how it was probably done back in the day but on a lot of these studies they uh, they tend to focus on the adaptive ability of human beings and use that as a, a starting point and say that humans actually adapt to their new environments rather than 
bring in technologies that they've already had and change their environments to suit their or to match the technologies that they're bringing in. Uh, a lot of these studies uh, are of the viewpoint that the technologies develop the technologies develop from the adaptation to those specific environments. And I don't think that's the case. And I think it's there's evidence like Clovis that it's such it's such a widespread technology that it doesn't appear to me that it's a technological adaptation to each environment in a separate way. It's widespread. So that means the technology was used in different environments. So either those environments were changed to suit the people or the technology itself suited many environments. So it didn't really matter what environment you were in. Okay, so when I'm doing my studies uh, going forward, and when I present information on my channel, I'm going to be of the mindset that man changes his environment to suit his technologies rather than adapting to the environment and developing new technologies. Okay, I do think there's some of that going on, but mainly what's going on is man will bring his technologies into the environment and change his environment to match what he already knows. Uh, I think that is a more successful method of survival. Uh, these days, since we have so much information, we take it for granted that we can adapt to almost any environment because we have the information from this environment, how to, like how to survive. If you're into bushcraft, you know how to survive in deserts, in mountains with snow, in lakes and rivers. It's all up in here because we have all this information that we're exposed to and we, we become well-versed. But back in the day, we didn't have that sort of instant access to everybody else's information. It was slower. So even though I think that some adaptation was taking place, of course, especially with agriculture and the and plants that were developed, and you would find which plants were yielding good uh, productive um, things in different environments, you would adapt to that. But as far as initially, I think that's the important part. Initially, in order to spread as fast as we did, we would have to bring our technologies with us. Uh, that's my viewpoint. Now, it's controversial, and I usually bring up controversial points because it, it allows us to discuss a lot of things in the comments, which I like. So that's just my viewpoint on it. I will be doing some more videos on that, perhaps. Uh, I don't think I need to do too much more. I might recommend studies and, and books and stuff. I haven't seen too many good, good books on the topic, but I'll see if I can find some. All right.